Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, an update, basically, on me tearing down this shop, or this side of the shop, that's horribly damaged. What I'm going to do to get this wall down, that's 10 foot high, 50 foot long, sitting at a 9 degree angle. It's sketchy. So, first of the video, we take a shop run, or a store run, meet a local viewer of the channel, and start installing all this stuff and talking about my plans to get this wall down without injuring myself or, or anyone else in the process. So, thanks for watching guys. Let's get started. Right, buddy. <laughs> how you doing, man? Good. How are you? I'm good. So this is John, the viewer that Elizabeth messaged in the truck on the off chance that he would see that message and come meet us in town. John had messaged me on my last video telling me that he was a local viewer, and I figured it'd be nice to, you know, meet him, shake his hand if I could. And uh, he seen the message, of course, and showed up, which was great. Uh, Definitely a smart guy. He gave me a suggestion on bracing for my jacks on the lift wall that I'm going to use, and it's much simpler than my original idea. So thank you, John. I appreciate getting to meet you. It was a pleasure. We probably sit there and you know shot ideas back and forth for an hour or so. We definitely want one that you don't have to put hair in the tires because the chances of them going flat are 100%. For it never having air in the tires when you need it. Are y'all done okay here? Thank you. We are, thank you. Thank you. Miss, are you uh, having a good afternoon? <laughs> Helping uh, Dad find things? You give everyone a chance? Fashion plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> So my temporary lift wall and support wall is just about ready. I got two more braces to put in and some more bracing to do up in the truss and then I'll be ready to start lifting and taking the load off of this wall. Now a buddy of mine who owns an engineering firm up, the structural engineering firm up north stopped by, he ran all the numbers on this, what I was doing, you know, gave this uh, very thorough look over, got up in the truss, looked at the bracing that was already there and uh, talked about bracing that needs to be there before this lift happens. You know, it's definitely nice to talk to somebody who knows what they're looking at. Some of this stuff is not common sense stuff, especially when you're dealing with trusses. Uh, they're made to be under tension or compression and lifting them like this, you know, if they weren't braced properly, could fold up like a deck of cards and this could be a complete death trap. So it, was, it took a little load off of me to talk to him you know, and make sure that what I'm doing is going to, or at least has the best chance of working. None of this stuff's foolproof, but you get the idea. I still got to do some bracing from the wall to the pad and to keep this wall, after I take the load off of it, from falling out into the, into the creek. I don't expect that to happen, but it's possible. Peanut also crawled around on this guy quite a bit and approved of him, which is all the assurance, really, that I need. Uh, to have faith in this guy. So I appreciate him stopping by. I'm not going to mention his name. He wanted to remain anonymous. But uh, it was eye-opening. We talked about soil. We talked about wind. We talked about snow loads that are possible at this time of year. And if this is going to be capable of handling it. 
and it was nice to know that what I'm doing you know, has a good chance of uh, being successful. So I'm reinforcing these trusts. I've already plated this bottom run, and now I need to transfer the load from the lift point through the entire truss. So I'm going from my lift point to my panel point where all these members on a truss meet, the closest one, and hopefully that will help transmit the load through the truss better. My wife picked me up this Gerber Suspension NXT little multi-tool for Valentine's Day. I thought that was a nice gift. Just pliers and your average assortment of tools that you use when you're in a pinch. I didn't have a multi-tool, so that was nice of her. Very thoughtful gift. We'll try it out, see how it works. But uh, kind of big. Never been a fan of carrying something like that in my pocket, but in these overalls it works. So we'll give that a shot, see how that uh, plays out. Place up peanut. Hmm. Am I messing up your house? You're knocking my stuff down. So that's a quarter inch steel cable. So I stopped by Harbor Freight. I needed to get a few things. I picked up this Bauer cordless drill. It is the 20 volt version. Um, it has the hammering feature. It's not a real hammer drill. 
but it will drill into concrete. I needed to drill a lot of little holes and my other drill does not have that feature. So I wanted to try it out. I also bought the two year warranty plan with this, which was like, I don't know, 12 or 15 bucks, somewhere right around in there. So at any time in the next two years, um, I can take this back for normal wear and tear, anything that's broken on it, batteries die within two years, just anything, and they'll replace it uh, free of charge, as far as I understand. So I want to try that out and uh, see how good it is. It's actually priced uh, very good considering uh, how much the name brand uh, drills of this type are. Not too bad, really. The real hammer drill does that a lot better, but, you know, for the money, that's pretty good, I think, so far. So I'd be willing to bet that none of you have seen a more used and abused come along than this one. This was given to me by, as, as far as I'm concerned, the hardest working man I've ever seen. And that's my older brother, Joey, who at this moment is dropped off in Alaska by bush plane in the middle of nowhere, building himself a cabin with hand tools. We've pulled motors with this. We've pulled trucks out of mud holes. We've pulled bent and broken carb body panels with it. I mean, you name it, we've done it. See how bent the handle is? Wrapped in electrical tape and a shop towel. Everything on it that can come loose has, and it's been welded. I mean, it's just extremely well used. Ridden behind my truck seat for the last 17 years plus. I mean, it was, I've had this longer than I've been married. And it rode behind his for who knows how long. But he'd give it to me, and uh, when it's done or broken, I'm just going to hang it on the shop wall. I can't imagine getting rid of it. Look how war the paws are for uh, the ratcheting, or the ratcheting mechanism is on it. He's a heck of a guy. He puts 110% in every single thing he does. Gets up before daylight and goes to bed whenever he's finished doing what he's doing. He's that type of guy. I've always looked up to him. So, you know, this kind of, every time I see this, it reminds me of him. So in my last video, one of my viewers wanted to know what tape measure I was using. I figured I'd share this with you guys. I, I kind of like this one. It's a recent purchase for me. This is a Lumpkin Shock Force 35 foot night eye. They said they were having trouble seeing and that uh, in the video at least this was easy for them to make out the um, you know the, the measurements with. And I agree that's one reason why I picked it up because it's so easy to see. I like the longer tape measures. They're never long enough and uh, you know, this was a pretty fair price compared to the rest of the models that were available. It's kind of hard to beat a good worn in Stanley Fat Max, you know, if you're doing a lot of work where you're hanging your tape measure out under unsupported. This one did not have the best rating for that, but I believe it did have the best you know, drop rating. So you get the idea. Pretty nice tape measure so far. It does have a diamond coated hook on the end if you were doing a lot of rock work, masonry work. It may hold up longer. That could very well just be marketing wank, but you get the idea. That's what I'm using, the Lumpkin Shock Force Night Eye.
So these are just spacers, piece of three and a half inch wide by three quarter inch thick. This is just poplar. And what this is going to do is once I've got this ceiling jacked up to whatever height I want at the time, because I don't want to rely on these jacks to hold it, I'm going to take a two by four and a four inch screw and then, you know, hook this as one unit. So then the weight will be resting on the actual two before. I'll have two of these on each post. This is all, in my opinion, overkill, but I would rather be safe than sorry. Now, this idea of cladding this, this allows me to adjust it as many times as I want just by changing the positions of the screws. This was an idea from a viewer of mine who I met at Lowe's in uh, town here. Um, so thank you, I appreciate that. That'll save me from having to, I, my idea was complicated, but I you know, already committed to it in my mind that I was just gonna put up a few posts here and there because it won't take much to hold this once it's up. But you get the idea, that's just a spacer. So it'll come and clear the jack and it'll hold this thing as long as I need it to. This is cold right now. I think it's about 17 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment. Sun's just now coming up. Kind of hard to believe that this brown place will be like a jungle in a few months. Alright guys, I think that's it. One more support to put in, then my load bearing wall will be ready and I'll slightly take the load off this ceiling just enough to where this wall's bearing and then start taking this down one block at a time. I mean, what else do you do? It's kind of like working on a, uh, I don't know, a card house, Some, somebody built out of a deck of cards. It's just unpredictable, really. There's so many factors here that you just can't account for everything. And it's just sketchy. I think that's probably a good descriptive word for this, uh, this demolition is sketchy. But it's got to come down, and hopefully it'll come down in a controlled manner and not in a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uncontrolled manner. It could pull the roof with it and it could kill you if it fell on you for sure. That's 10 feet high. I picked up this ladder to try to keep me off the wall while I'm working on it. And you can see a regular ladder. Of course you'd have to lean it against the wall. And you couldn't put it sideways because of the angle. Scaffolding would be interfering with my supports so I thought it was probably a good compromise to get something like this. So we'll see. Thanks for all the support on the GoFundMe, and that, uh, that's amazing to know that people got your back in, uh, when you're in a bad spot, because I was just sick of looking at this thing, and I was going to make a move on it, whether it took me six months or six years, I really didn't care. Um, I was just ready to move, to stop looking at it and do something about it. You know, it's just the way it was, so, the way it is. So thank you guys, I definitely appreciate it, as you can imagine. Uh, to anybody who supported me in any way, um, uh, I definitely appreciate it. Go check out my buddy Brian Block if you want to see what somebody can do if they're driven to, to get something done. He took an old tobacco barn and basically turned it into a super nice shop. Go check out some of his older videos. I'll put his name up here. You can search him, but he's basically my neighbor and a really nice guy. I got some work that I got to do for him that I've been putting off. But hopefully this wall will start coming down soon. And... Uh, I'll be a happier person when it's down, that's for sure, because this is one of the sketchiest things, I think, you know, in uh, this whole project, so I think that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Click on my bell to be notified. Click on my guy to subscribe to the channel. 
And that's it. So thanks for all the support. Uh, you can definitely use it and definitely appreciate it. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.